Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. You guys know what time it is? Time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And for those of you who like these type of videos, please remember to click like down below. It would be greatly appreciated. If you aren't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. But, I came across a video that uh, one of my viewers linked me by none other than Scott Herman Fitness talking about building your traps. And as he admitted, he always does his clickbait titles with this stuff, and at least he, he admits that in the video, so I'll give credit where credit is due there. It's a good marketing gimmick. I'm not going to knock the hustle. So over to the point, though. Um, this falls into this category of, of one of these things that I do find amusing. Scott will talk a lot about things like traps when he personally still struggles with trap development. And, and I think one of the things that I would point out there is that um, when you personally struggle with development, and you start coming up with kind of unconventional ways to build a muscle, it might be time to rethink that maybe you don't understand that, right? Scott doesn't have problems with things like his chest, right? He, it's good chest development. Like Scott's one of those guys that and he's got good tips for training your chest. He understands the basics. He applies it correctly, uh, and he teaches it correctly. If someone wants a bigger chest, generally speaking, the way that he teaches you how to bench, the way that he teaches you how to press, those things are going to do a pretty good job of that. He understands the importance of arching scapular retraction, and, and it works. So his tips there are good. But the problem we have is that the traps are kind of one of those, those gym cell muscles. They're a muscle that gym cells, or in cells, tend to get obsessed with, and it's really bizarre. And it's uh, this idea they have that they think that they're going to look bigger in a shirt because they have big traps, right? But the reality is if you want to look bigger in a shirt, you just need to get big. Okay, if you want to look big in a t-shirt, get big. Um, and traps kind of are one of those muscles that, that always fascinates me coming from a strength background that people who are physique oriented get obsessed with because it's like your traps are going to be massive if you just learn how to train. Traps, unless you really have some need to specialize in them, your traps are going to get monstrous even if you don't put any thought into them at all. And if your traps aren't getting monstrously big, because people note that a lot of times in my own training these days. Because I do train shirtless, so my vlog four days a week. My traps are pretty good size. And they notice, especially from behind, my whole upper back, whole mid back, all of that. You just think I do anything special for that? No. You know that that's the norm for strength athletes? That's the norm. It's not due to specialized work. Let's come over to the point. If you're strong, your traps are going to get big. Okay, it's, it's very, very simple. And it's because your traps get worked every day. Now, one of the things that, that Scott pointed out, you know, a lot of you guys, you could add extra trap days in. And it's like, if you think you're on a good routine um, and you, you want more trap work, you can add extra trap days. But it's like, I look at that and go, don't all good routines train traps every day? Like, what sort of good training program doesn't already train traps every day? with a lot of workload. They're kind of like calves. They're kind of like forearms. That if you learn how to train correctly, you're probably going to reach your genetic potential and things like calves. Calves are a perfect example. Anyone who really trains correctly is going to get the biggest calves or genetics are going to allow for, most likely or very close, without ever doing a single calf race. And if you don't know what I mean, you guys don't watch my own training vlogs. Um, it's not necessary to do calf work. In fact, I don't think your calf should, if you're training correctly, your calf shouldn't have enough recovery to do calf raises. There's something you've left a lot in the tank with certain aspects of your training. You aren't doing enough weighted jumps or dynamic squatting or anything if, if your calves uh, still have room to do a bunch of extra work every week. But over to the point with traps. Every day is trap day. What do I mean? Well, if you're doing full body three days a week, which is what what most novices should be doing, and let's be realistic. I mean, you got to take guys like Scott, and Scott's channel is for novices, and, and Scott knows that. And he realizes that. Come on, brother. You know that your channel is for novice lifters. There is no intermediate who has stalled as an early intermediate and reached a plateau in his training to where the info in your channel is going to push up past that stall. You don't run that sort of channel, and that's okay. It's not your wheelhouse. Uh, it's pretty, I mean, you got over a million subscribers, and that's because you do market to novices, because there's over a million novices out there looking for advice. It's a big market. There's nothing on your channel that's going to help the intermediate lifter who stalled. It's not for them. It's not for them. It's not going to work. 
good novice information. So then when we throw stuff in like this trap specialization, no, just have them do novice stuff. Some of the full body routines that he has for some novice lifters will get your traps proportionately big. It's what happens is that these kids want traps that are disproportionately big, as if they think that's some magical thing. Uh, no, just get your, your traps should be on par with the rest of your back. Get a big, strong back, and you're going to have big, strong traps. Have a big, strong shoulder girdle, and you're going to have big, strong traps. Because traps have several different parts also, don't they? There's at least three parts of the trap wide degree of insertions has a few different functions. But what do I mean by every day is trap day on, a, on any sort of split? Well, what's, what's the only real split that's really worth doing? Upper, lower four day a week, right? Works great for everyone from some of the best power lifters in the world to NFL players, MMA fighters, what Joe DeFranco runs for people. Uh, that's what Viata runs for his hybrid athletes. I mean, it's, it's pretty time proven effective. Anybody who trains that way is a reasonably advanced athlete, do they all not have monstrous traps? It's just kind of par for the course. Do, do people in sports with a strength orientation have a problem building traps? No, never. It is a non-issue. Because every day is trap day already before you ever do a single shrug. What's an upper lower usually look like? Squat and deadlift. Squat and deadlift accessories twice a week of some manner, no matter how you're periodizing it. Bench press and upper body and, and accessories for that on the other two days, no matter how you periodize it. Well, that means traps get trained every day. Because if you're doing deadlifts, I mean, squats actually work your traps too, by the way. You're doing a bunch of deadlifting. You're doing hip hinging. Doing good mornings. Traps get worked. Have some, we start messing with accommodating resistance on deadlifts. Traps get worked really hard. Okay? They get worked really hard. All those things are going to train your traps. GPP, your loaded carries, are going to train traps. Upper body days is where the real trap work happens. Rows. Rows build traps just as well as shrugs, arguably, by the way. Rows, pull-ups, chin-ups, overhead pressing. Overhead pressing competes with the shrug for upper trap development, but it builds your whole shoulder girdle. So all your various pulls and a lot of your and some of your presses are going to build your traps. They're going to build your traps. Um, what I do with my own clients who have a problem with their whole upper back development. Let's go over to the point. This is why I'm not a fan of people trying to come up with 37 different group ball types of shrugs who haven't built a base. If you have small traps, you probably have a problem with your entire upper back. This is a problem for Scott. Scott's a perfect example. Proportionately speaking, he lacks upper back development. Right? That's his one of his big. That's his weak link. His upper back is his weak link in his overall musculature. And I don't talking about aesthetics. I'm talking about for an athlete. If he wanted to be an athlete, his whole upper back is too small. It hurts his performance. It hurts his strength. So instead of shrugs, why not just train the whole region? So what do I do if I if I get a client? Who that's a weak link for them. I have them do up to 20 sets of barbell rows. I have one client who I put him on 20 sets. 20 sets. But you know what? Within six weeks, I blew his entire upper back up. Now, when I say rows, I don't mean sheet rows. I mean strict pen lay rows focused on the upper back. Slightly wider grip we pulled to his upper chest, super strict. And I'm doing like five, up to five sets of 10 all four of his training days because he was on an upper lower split and why not aren't rows a deadlift accessory sure are they a bench accessory sure we can run them on an upper lower we can run them on a squat bench deadlift oriented four day split you can do rows all four days they're an accessory for all those movements why not had him do five sets of ten with progressive overload we started light and built it up over six weeks within six weeks his upper back, even in a t-shirt, the whole thing, traps, rear delts, rhomboids, all of it thickened up. Problem solved. Problem solved. Right, there's your solution, guys. Train your whole upper back. Get big and strong, and that's the other thing to remember, too. If you have a solid base top to bottom, your traps are going to get big by default because all these big movements 
if you have enough workload and enough volume and enough tension, are going to beat your traps into the ground. And some of you guys who want to do all this extra trap work, if you're not on gear, I don't know how you think you're going to recover from it unless you're pussyfooting around with everything else that you're doing. If you have all this recovery left for all these power shrugs and you're completely clean, you are absolutely playing and goofing around with your other training. Your training itself sucks. Your training itself sucks. You're lazy. That's why you don't have big traps. That's it. You're training like a pussy. Or your traps would already be big and you wouldn't have the recovery left in your upper back to do, stand around doing power shrugs without adding something, some sort of substance to, to give you extra recovery. That's the only way you're going to get away with it. So I know for a fact you guys are training. Training weak. You need to learn how to train. Train hard. Problem solved. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.